Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal, and today we're gonna to talk about the equipment that we just used in our main gear review for remote communications. This is gonna be in the gear issue of Overland Journal, and we go through the full spectrum of available options, and I've got all of them on the table with the exception of the WeBoost, and we'll talk about that for a few minutes as well, but what we're gonna really start with is the most simple of communications or the most legacy of communications. And that starts off with radio communications. We've been using these Rocky Talkies. There's lots of other options. This is a brand new five watt unit, so it can reach up to about 30 miles of range in simplex line of sight. Um, and it just requires you to register on the FCC website um, as a user of this device, but it does not require a ham radio license. Uh, there are other radios out there that require a ham license that use two meter, 70 centimeter, and a bunch of other frequencies. And then there's also um, ultra high frequency units that can travel for very long distances. When early vehicle-based expeditions were done, like Tom Shepard crossing the Sahara in the late 1960s, what was done at that period of time was always um, VHF, UHF radios and you never know really who you're gonna get on the other end, but there's a lot of amateur radio operators out there that do monitor and they can pick up, uh, you might be talking to someone in Australia when you need help, but that's still something to be worth considering because there's no monthly service fee, um, you buy the unit and oftentimes they're multi-band so you can use it for simplex communications to other vehicles that are around you, but it does require a specialized license and the communication is somewhat unpredictable. The next thing after that, again, is of course coming back to these GMRS radios. They're excellent source of near proximity communication between vehicles or between someone that is maybe going into town. That's why I'm using these in Africa. So I could be in the campsite and my travel partner could be going into the village to buy some provisions and easily over that couple mile range, we've got good communications, reliable communications. So radios are your basic form of communication. The next thing after that is gonna be the one that we're all most familiar with, which is gonna be our smartphones or cell phones in general. And there's lots of advantages to that. And that's because 92% of the people in the world have access to cellular connectivity which that seems weird because we know that there aren't cell phone towers everywhere, but the majority of the people who live in the world are concentrated around cities or areas where cell phone is available. And cell phone coverage continues to improve, particularly in the developing world, where it's more expensive for them to actually run landlines as opposed to just putting up cellular towers uh, that allow for communication for those individuals that are living in remote areas. So in my travels around the world, I have found that cellular connectivity is quite reliable and it's my primary means of communication. But these new cell phones, like for example, the iPhone 14 and newer, they also have some additional connectivity. So they can use satellite SOS. Now, we don't wanna use this as our only means of emergency communication. I think for a lot of people, it works just fine. But for those of us that are intentionally traveling remotely by vehicle, most of the time the emergency that we're having or the, the issue that we're having doesn't require rescue. It typically just requires someone to bring out an additional spare tire, maybe you've run out of gas, maybe you've had a mechanical issue, tie rods damage or a steering system, some component on the vehicle. So what you wanna have is reliable two-way communication from anywhere in the world. The cell phone should still be used as our primary means of communication, it's how we're gonna hail an Uber, it's how a lot of these devices that are on the table actually interface with us as a consumer of the data source. So sat phones are the next level up from that, but we still wanna be mindful of the fact that a cell phone can often be the least expensive and the most ubiquitous form of communication. After the traditional cell phone, we're gonna be moving up to the satellite phones. I've got a couple units on the table here, uh, one that uses the Iridium network and one that uses the Global Star network. We have found in, in our travels that the Global Star network is it tends to be less expensive, but it has also been the least reliable. Uh, we've had 
big periods of time when the Global Star Network is not working. Uh, when I was in Australia during Expedition 7, I did not have any means of communicating on the Global Star Network. So they've had quite a bit of downtime. Um, they're, I know they're working on that, but um, and they currently have better coverage, but this also does not work at the poles, doesn't work at the high latitudes, it doesn't work in some places in Asia and in Western Africa. Um, so I think Global Star is fine if you're just traveling in North America down to Baja. You want to have reliable uh, voice communications. Now, why would we still consider a satellite phone to be worth carrying. Uh, the reason for that is some people just want to stay disconnected. They want to just bring an emergency communication device that they can um, provide updates to their family. They want to call them, they want to hear their voice, they want to have voice communications, or in the case of telemedicine. So for example, when we were crossing the Pacific Ocean um, on a sailboat, we also brought along a satellite in addition to the data communications. We wanted to have redundancy, but we also wanted to be able to have a, a voice call with telemedicine. Oftentimes we have some of the tools that we need in order to provide care in remote areas, but you wanna be able to get feedback from an emergency medical professional doctor that can walk you through the process of providing advanced care. So you want to be able to do that using voice communication so you very clearly understand um, what they're saying. Of course, a two-way messenger can work, but it won't work as well as getting that immediate feedback of you describing what's happening um, and, getting, and getting that information uh, from the medical professional. So that's Global Star. The one that we have always relied on is the Iridium network. It works at the poles. It's how I communicated at the South Pole. It's actually how I communicated with the team from Prince Harry when they needed our support. So we were actually able to actively communicate using Iridium network and I have had 100% success with this network. I've never had any downtime. I've always had reliable communications and that is the satellite phone that we carry. The one, the unit that I recommend is the Extreme. Um, it also has uh, the ability to connect to data at 2.4 kilobits per second, or it also has the ability to press the SOS button. It's also got some other features. When we were crossing Antarctica and we were crossing Greenland, we were doing daily check-ins. In Antarctica, the Antarctic um, agencies require you to do daily check-ins via satellite phone, which is a satellite message that's sent out at a specific time during the day. It also has a tracking function too. So the Iridium Extreme satellite phone does have a lot of features, including SMS, uh, that can be useful in addition to the voice calls. But I recommend the Iridium satellite phone. It's the phone that we use for all of our bigger trips around the world. Then we're gonna talk about satellite messengers. Uh, there's a lot of these on the market. And what we have found is that there are people who are coming up with either um, the right size unit for a certain activity, or they've come up with a unique marketing spin or maybe some unique technology, how it interfaces with the phone. But most of them are using the same two networks. They're either using the Global Star Network, like the Spot devices do, um, or they're using the Iridium Network, like the Garmin InReach and uh, many of the other units that are available uh, on, on the market use. They do use those two networks. They can basically lease um, or create a, a partnership between them and the satellite constellation that allows for their devices to communicate. So the Spot has been around the longest. Um, this is one of their newest units. It's their Spot X. Um, it Bluetooths to the phone for messaging. It also has a keypad uh, for relatively quick messages. Uh, right through the unit. These are very good spots. I've trusted them with my life for a long time, but they have not really kept up with a lot of the new innovations. Their app is not as effective. And then it comes back to that Global Star Network. So there's gonna be places in Africa, there's gonna be places in Asia, and at the high latitudes, um, these are not gonna be as effective as an Iridium-based two-way communicator. So that's the spot device. This is not something that we covered in the main gear review because it doesn't meet our minimum threshold for connectivity or like the, the Garmin inReaches do. This is the newest Garmin inReach. It's their smallest unit. It's called the inReach Messenger. Um, I prefer this one or um, the Mini 2. Uh, the Mini 2 I also use and I keep that on my sailboat all the time. 
uh, but, and I use it um, for a lot of my trips, but I've gone to the Messenger because it is the most compact unit. I, I can actually easily carry it on my person. Um, and you can type messages very, very slowly via this very small screen, or you can activate SOS in addition, and then it has a great app on the phone. So it's a very clever system where it'll use cellular if cellular is available, or if you're at the edge of service, it'll switch over uh, to the satellite messages, or of course, if you don't have any service at all, it will transmit via the Iridium network. These allow for short messages. You can't send images, uh, but you can send messages and emojis and things like that. And you can get these unlimited packages that work everywhere in the world, and you can actively keep up with family members. You can also track yourself with this unit. Now, tracking is an important consideration. It's something that people don't often implement when they use these devices. Tracking is key because we need to be able to have it running all the time. Imagine a scenario where you get into a vehicle accident and um, maybe the vehicle catches on fire or maybe you're incapacitated. Um, you want to have people know your last known location. There's lots of scenarios that you can think of that are a little bit doomsday, but uh, one that's, that's more common is the vehicle catching fire or vehicle accident um, and maybe your phone has been damaged. You want people to know your last known location um, and these devices are great for that. I also use this as a tracker for the vehicle. So I will, when it's not on my person, I'll keep it inside the vehicle. So that way if the vehicle was stolen, we'll know where the vehicle is located. Um, and it also provides a backup track that you can use as a breadcrumb trail and others can use as a breadcrumb trail to find you. Most of the time we just use it as a way to communicate. We use it to, as a way to let people know that we're coming um, when we're outside of the service area. So least expensive and most effective solution. It was one of our editor's choice winners. Uh, this unit itself costs around $200 and it interfaces with your smartphone. If your smartphone is disabled or you run out of batteries, for example, um, you can use this unit to send messages albeit very slowly. But it also has two-way charging, so you can, if your cell phone is about ready to, ready to run out of power, you can actually plug in the USB into this device and use it as a mini power brick to get a little bit more power into your phone to maybe send off those last few messages. So Garmin InReach is our editor's choice for two-way communications, um, a very effective, inexpensive tool. Now that we've talked about these smaller, more portable devices, we're gonna move into the larger antenna units that also have faster data speeds. So we're gonna go back in time a little bit to what has been the gold standard of, of higher speed internet access via satellite, which is gonna be BGAN. Uh, BGAN stands for Broadband Global Access Network. Um, this is the size of the antenna. It is a compact antenna portable. It provides up to uh, 492 kilobits per second. It is fast enough to actually do video communication to upload video files. So when you're seeing something on CNN from a war zone, that's almost always coming from a unit like this. Uh, this is used typically in commercial settings. It's gonna be used in mining, it's gonna be used in media in remote locations, it's gonna be used by military units, it's gonna be used rarely by travelers, but it will be used by travelers. I used one of these when I crossed the Silk Road, when I went through the stands. I wanted to have reliable means of data communication. I wanted to be able to do uploads and posts from the field, so I used this exact satellite um, unit, BGAN unit from Thrain um, when I went uh, across the Silk Road and when I went through the walk-on corridor of Afghanistan. So this is a Thrain and Thrain unit. It provides a local area Wi-Fi connection. You can also plug in an RJ45 into your laptop, but very compact. This is the entire unit, including the battery pack. Um, but <clears throat> they are very expensive to operate. Um, they're relatively expensive to purchase in the thousands of dollars. Um, and a single megabyte of data being uploaded costs between four and seven dollars. So if you think about what this new iPhone can produce, which is a 60 megapixel image, it's gonna be in that 30 to 40 megabyte range. So put some dollars and cents behind that. 
When you're doing that kind of transmission, it can be in the hundreds or thousands of dollars to transmit data. So most people only use these in emergency situations. I used it very lightly, um, but it is an effective tool and it's still being used till today. Um, we included that in the sidebar because we no longer believe that it's actually the right kind of solution for a typical overland scenario uh, because there's now other tools that are available. That's the BGAN. After the BGAN, we need to talk about, it's actually one of the newest devices that are available uh, within the space. So this is an Iridium Go executive. Um, they've had the Iridium Go for many years. I used the Iridium Go during the Expedition 7 crossing of the long axis of the Greenland ice sheet. Um, it allows for data and voice communications, but at very slow uh, data rate, so 2.4 kilobits per second, which means that it would take um, about 10 minutes to, to upload uh, a very small file, uh, kind of an email kind of file. So, and it would take hours to do something larger, like if I was needing to download a GPX file, which I needed to do when we were trying to get around a crevasse zone. So this took hours and actually multiple attempts. Um, at the time, it was the best that we had, and they work really well for voice communications, SMS, and that is the standard Iridium Go, which is the same data rate that the Iridium Extreme sat phone operates at, that 2.4 kilobits per second. But they have a brand new unit. Um, this is called the Iridium Go Executive, and it uses a new satellite constellation that has higher speeds, it's lower Earth orbit, so they have very low latency, and you can get up to 88 kilobits per second. So you're actually into the realm of being able to do um, work in the modern day using this device. So you can send and receive emails, it works really well with WhatsApp and other apps, um, you can do some very light uploading to social media. You definitely don't want to be doom scrolling on Instagram with this thing because of the cost, uh, but it will absolutely work when it comes to uploading a tweet to X or something like that. It will work just fine for that. It's a larger unit than the previous Iridium Go. It has a touch screen. It can operate two voice calls at the same exact time. Really impressive unit. It's designed to be used everywhere in the world, including high latitudes. So this works at the South Pole and the North Pole and everywhere in between. It is more expensive to operate and slower than a Starlink, but it does work everywhere. And for an adventure motorcycle traveler, this is actually something you could bring along with you. Um, this is a much smaller unit, even than the BGAN. So you can see that it's similar in size to the BGAN, but smaller overall. Um, and this is something that you can pack away. Very effective tool and recently available on the market. The unit itself costs around $1,700 and some unlimited plans can come in even around four or $500 a month depending upon uh, the provider of the SIM. So it's got this protective cover. You need to be a little bit mindful about leaving this thing out in open sun. It does have a very broad operating range, but like any other device, if you leave it out baking in the sun, it can start to provide some warnings and even shut down. Um, but I'm really impressed with this unit so far. And then we kind of come to the elephant in the room, and the elephant in the room is the Starlink, uh, because it is such a revolution to remote communication. All these other devices are, they have, have evolved over time. Uh, the Starlink is an absolute revolution. They have, they started off with 4,000 small satellites at low Earth orbit. Um, so they now have close to 7,000 satellites that are deployed. They have 2 million subscribers. Um, and this is broadband internet essentially everywhere in the world. They don't, they don't work at the high latitudes yet. That's gonna happen, I'm sure. Um, this is our Starlink unit, which we had converted by Unique Componentry. We went with a conversion because we wanted to be able to operate on 12 volts, and we wanted to make the unit as compact as possible. I'm actually just a few days away from flying to Africa with both this and the Iridium Go exec unit um, so that I can have reliable communications as I'm crossing the African continent. Uh, the Starlink does work uh, throughout most of the Americas and it works throughout most of Africa. 
They will show limited availability in some countries. So far, um, it has worked everywhere that people are using it. This works magneted to the top of the vehicle and it provides broadband internet speeds even while I'm driving at interstate speeds. So um, it is a very effective tool and it's also very inexpensive. The unit itself costs around $500. The conversion costs just over $1,000, but it's worth every penny because it's still less than their mobile unit. And then you need to get the right coverage plan. So there are domestic roaming plans, and then there's a global roaming plan. I'm on the global roaming plan, which costs about $200 a month. But when you talk about game changers, the, the Starlink is the same kind of game changer that the inReach was from Garmin. Um, so it is another one of our editor's choices. The Starlink units, I don't really need to sing its praises too much because everybody knows how good it is and how well it works and it allows us to work from the field. I can do um, a Zoom call from the middle of nowhere or at 9,000 feet up in the aspen trees and I can communicate just as I do here in the Overland International offices and it is now available globally. It's just coming out and being available for use on sailboats, uh, which is a multi-antenna unit that works with a little bit more of the changes in attitude of the boat in the sea state. Uh, and then they've also got units that are now gonna be available um, in aircraft too. But what's really gonna change is before we know it, there's gonna be smaller and smaller Starlink solutions, including them just recently coming to an agreement with T-Mobile, so we're gonna start to see Starlink service available on cellular, which is gonna be that next order of magnitude of change for those of us that are traveling. Imagine, imagine being able to be anywhere in the world um, with broadband internet on your phone, being able to do work, communicate with family, um, even have a, 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 phone, a video call with your kids. So these tools are all very powerful. Our editor's choice goes to the unique componentry um, Starlink, and it also goes to the Garmin um, inReach unit. Um, those are both very effective tools. We also gave the uh, value award to WeBoost, and that's the last thing that we're gonna talk about. Um, the WeBoost, for most people, is the right choice because it doesn't work everywhere, but it works almost everywhere, and it amplifies your cellular connection. Um, it also doesn't require a monthly service. One of the things that I have as a criticism of a lot of these devices is that you're paying big money every single month. And for some travelers, that's just not feasible. Whereas if you buy a WeBoost for a few hundred dollars and you install it with the antenna on your vehicle, it's gonna, your cell phone's gonna now work in more places than it ever has before, and you'll get better speeds and better overall connect connectivity uh, using the WeBoost. So, for the value award, we really believe that the WeBoost is the right first step for most travelers, um, and it's gonna give you that connectivity that you're looking for in the backcountry. So that's our overview of what we covered in the Overland Journal gear issue, remote communications main gear review. And thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.